Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to showcase a game between uh, Green Han and Iden Red. If you guys haven't seen my Green Han deck profile yet, I'll put the link in the description or somewhere at the end of the video. I highly recommend giving him a shot. He's very good at battling these control decks that seem to be sprouting out everywhere and is a solid tier 1 choice. So if you don't want to hear me talk during the video and you just want to watch, uh, go ahead and mute, you know, and just watch the game. But if you want to hear the commentary alongside, you know, uh, yeah, don't mute me. All right, so let's get started. Um, so, you know, Han is really good at playing three drops on turn one because of his ability. But we actually don't really want to do that into the control matchups. So when we're mulliganing, we're always looking for resupply, but we're also looking for... C3PO, which is one of the only two drops in our deck, or R2-D2. Uh, playing removal on these cards don't feel great for our opponent, and as you see here, we get to draw a card from C3PO and from Force Choke, and that is a lot of value for us. So we're pretty happy about that. I get the initiative, and it goes to my turn. On turn, uh, on three resources, we normally want to be playing a resupply. Um, that's some of the strongest, powerful greatest things we can do as Han, right, is be playing that resupply, uh, because we just get to play uh, our higher cost cards before them. Especially in a control matchup, we're not going to get punished with life. So I did get the resupply, which is very lucky for me. Uh, the only downside against uh, blue control decks is that we actually don't really want to tempo out our Han early, using like a ramp effect and then playing Han, because they could just pass and then Power of the Dark Side, our leader away. And that's like worst case scenario. So whenever uh, you want to summon Han in this matchup, you have to have a dude on the board first. So that's what I'm going to be looking to do if you're questioning like why I'm not just uh, steamrolling into Han. It's because we're waiting uh, to summon that unit. Which I do exactly right here. So playing Echo Base Defender, we're pretty much just giving him stuff to kill. Uh, Han can outvalue control decks pretty hard because he has so many cards that just draw. So you'll see in the late game that he starts running out of stuff. But yeah, so he uses his uh, takedown. And because he's out of resources, uh, we definitely go to summon Han here, right? So I'm going to use Han ability. Probably just thinking about, you know, what's the worst card in my hand. You guys like my sleeves, by the way? They're pretty cool, right? <laughs> Uh, use a little dice reminder. I sometimes forget, but it's good for you know you and your opponent to remind yourself that you're going to be killing stuff. And we attack with Han. Uh, I have my little life pad to the left, so you guys can actually keep track of life down there. Uh, pretty hard to count his base, to be honest. Um, you know, one of the powerful things about Iden is because they could pass, they can always uh, you know heal that one life whenever they want to, and he still gets the initiative, which is cool for him. But now, as you see, I have two dudes on the board, and if we think about what Ida can do on five resources, it's actually not kill two things. So uh, my leader is very safe right now. Uh, like, the worst thing that can happen to is it can get entrenched, um, in which case, like, we don't get to do a seven drop this turn. Uh, so why am I looking at my resources right here? So we main one copy of home one. Um, so we want specific cards in our drop instead of just anything. Um, and, you know, we side in two more home ones, so it is uh, something just to get yourself some good habits. Also, like, you don't want your opponent to know that you resource certain things, so you can also, like, you know, just show them the garbage instead of the good stuff that you didn't want to resource but had to. So, uh, really good for me. doesn't have the entrench. He ends up force choking my guy. Uh, you know, I have the decision to make here to swing and then try to play a 7, but then I see that he has enough resources for Power of the Dark Side, so this is a tough call. Um, to avoid, again, this Power of the Dark Side play, I could just summon another guy and just keep that really high, annoying pressure for him, make him waste more and more resources just to deal with my leader, when, you know, that's not really how I'm even winning the game. And we've got Force Choke twice, which is lucky for him to have that easy removal, but also gives us plus 2 cards in hand, which is super nice. You see, I, I thought a long time about, you know, do I want to summon this? Um, and he, look, he does have the power of the dark side. You know, do I want to summon the guy or lose my leader? So I'm making it, again, really hard to lose my leader. Um, so we just sacrificed our Bright Hope pretty much, knowing that he's going to power the dark side. 
And as soon as he took initiative, I'm going to do my best to probably play another card here. But it's not like he has infinite power of the dark sides on his side. And we do play safe, right? So wing leader gets uh, no value. We're playing three resources, three resources for a 2-1, which is pretty shit. Uh, but that's okay. Because we're protecting our Han Solo for the rest of the game. And you know he doesn't want to spend any cards removing our 2-1. Oh, sorry about the glare. <coughs> but, uh, yeah. So he summons out his leader. Um, a little bit annoying leader for Han. We have our uh, Han, I think, in hand, which has, you know, that first strike damage. So it gets to do damage before it receives it, which is really good if you kill the unit. So we're probably seeing if I can damage the Aiden here. But uh, sending four into Aiden does feel bad. So we just we just go for life. We're saying, hey, you need to attack my Han. See, my opponent has a Vigilance in hand. What do you guys think about that card? You know, it's not really my favorite. Paying six for its effect is, uh, you know, whatever. There you go. So he attacks into my Han knowing that he needs to kill it. And then I just get to instantly punish him by playing uh, seven drop Han for my hand and killing his Iden. Um, why did he attack my Han? Because it's never getting off the field if he doesn't do something right. So he's just like, I have to spend two turns attacking it. And here we go. He plays his Vigilance, and he gets to kill my Han and heal five. But we're not really sad about that at all. Um, he spent like his whole turn killing a leader that's been on the field for a few turns. So uh, we're not too sad about that. We have a seven drop and our Wing Leader again. You can see how strong this Wing Leader is, because it means we can never get Power of the Dark Side again. So while I did lose you know, the value of uh, buffing something up, we have the... Uh, the power to take control. So right, what I did right there is a pretty important thing in Star Wars Limited is I took the initiative. Why did I do that? Because he's playing a removal dot deck and I rather guarantee six damage than get in the free two damage. So I'm just hedging that he'll have some sort of way to deal with my Han Solo. So I rather just take initiative and uh, hit him for six in the dome. So he's at 19 now, we're still at 30. And he's counting up, so, you know, he's taking 11. However you guys want to debate about who does the life. It doesn't really bother me. He puts them both on the bottom. You know, he's probably only looking for Super Laser Blast at this point. Yeah, we get in our damage as soon as we can. And we're about halfway through with this game. Uh, by the way, I didn't really talk about it, but this is the finals match. So, uh, me and him, this guy, are both 2-0 uh, right now. Uh, he vanquishes my Han Solo, and then we play the 97th Legion, which is a pretty dope card against red decks in general, as long as they don't remove its abilities with like uh, the Force Lightning, I think it's called. But otherwise, it just has so many defenses that it's uh, pretty hard to deal with. It's really annoying, too. Like, it, it requires instant attention because, you know, like we're going to have 3, 7, 8. If I resource right here, it's going to be a 9 9. Uh, that's half his life, so. He's probably going to play and keep whatever card he can with to deal with it. And yeah, we see the Entrench come out, which we're fine with. As soon as he Entrenches this, that means we, we really want to be space-focused if we can. Or um, we know that like he can never summon anything. You know, He wants to be space-focused, sorry. Because he can never really summon anything in the ground, because he'll just die instantly. Uh, we see the Vigilance come out. And look at that. He has to kill a Wing Leader with it. That feels pretty good for us. I guess he didn't want to take damage on his uh, spaceship. You could say that's a misplay there. Um, or just making the most out of his Vigilance. Because I don't think milling matters when my deck is so big. So maybe it's just making the most out of a Vigilance. And here we go. We're just going to start valuing him. Uh, we do whiff, but uh, these little cards are really annoying for him. I'm pretty much saying, hey, like, top deck a Super Laser Blast, and then top deck another Super Laser Blast. Uh, you know, because we're holding three cards, and he's holding one, so we're way up in value. And now I just, I played an Ezra, so, like, I'm saying, hey, guys, I'm going to be drawing two cards a turn, possibly. 
you know, and doing all this chip damage. And as you see, like, my ground is so safe. Like, while I can't attack with this 97th Legion, like, he is, like, whatever, what, a 12-12? Like, he, anything he summons just instantly dies. So he top sacks, like, Emperor Palpatine or a Sentinel unit. Oh, you can see he has the Emperor Palpatine in his hand, right? Like, that's only killing one of my four defense cards. Uh, and then it just dies immediately. So it doesn't really feel good on his end. And uh, you can start seeing why, like, Han is just so strong in two control decks because we just have a full grip. And uh, you can kind of see this Avenger right here in his hand, but uh, summoning Avenger doesn't really do much, right? We have too many guys. And here he goes. He summons the Avenger. Uh, we probably picked the 97th Legion to die here. But I really did consider killing my 2-drop just because my ground is so solid. But I was like, again, I'm playing against this control deck. Uh, I don't have the Waylay in hand right now. And Waylaying his Avenger just is like an instant GG. And I don't think I've seen a Waylay this game. Maybe there's one of my resources. Actually, there's, there's one of my resources. So I still have two in my deck. So drawing two cards here looking for Waylay doesn't feel too bad. Look at that value. And now we get to dig three cards. And I think we do find the waylay off that R2-D2. So we always get to predict, right? And my man just be taking one and healing one. There we go. We get waylay. We finally take damage. We're at 28. Two is 18. We have nine total resources right now, so we could waylay and play a seven drop if we use hot ability. And you know, we drew two cards this turn. So with our dudes, right? We got R2 for free, we got Waylay for free. Uh, we probably want to slam a seven here, even though it is like bad into Palpatine, just because our field is our field is so big. We're like saying, hey, draw the super laser now. because uh, he has like an effective one card hand right now. So I think he just resource a takedown. That's not really doing much. Yeah, he slams the Palpatine, which we knew would happen. Uh, but we're fine with, even though we gave him a target last turn. Because uh, again, we're just we're just gonna outvalue him with all our small things. Well, that was a big thing. As you see, this deck has a lot of uh, top deck play. So there is a uh, like a high skill ceiling when you play this deck, for sure. So don't be uh, you know dissuaded if your games aren't going perfect right away. Uh, we get a Bright Hope, which is a really good value against this deck. It's a fun, uh, you know, interesting thing with, like, Emperor Palpatine and Han Solo. The unit, they just kill each other. Which is weird, right? Ooh, I drew my uh, one of Mace Windu. Uh, if you guys are trying to play this deck more competitively, I think uh, the Mace Windu is the, definitely the cuttable card. You just main deck two home ones. Especially in this control meta, but Mace Windu is super fun. So, great off. Uh, oh, look at that value, bro. So, if you saw that, instead of choosing to bounce our little unit, we chose to bounce our 7 drop. Especially since that's our last one. And we're just like, hey, this card is so good against you. Like, it says, hey, you can play Palpatine and kill a guy, but just psh, summon a dude and kill your guy for free. It's just really good value. And at this point in the game, I was more scared of Super Laser Blast happening. Um, and losing my 7 drop there. We're fine with this. Again, Avenger's pretty bad when we're playing all these little things. Uh, debating whether they're to attack with a C3PO or Ezra. So we chose Ezra, just more damage. 
Uh, he has two resources left. But uh, either one's probably fine. And that's a cool little play we did. We got to summon a fleet lieutenant off Ezra and then attacking with Bright Hope for four. A lot of uh, actions in one. Two attacks and summoning a guy, right? And again, you can just see like the hand size advantage. Even if so, he, he does get really unlucky not seeing super laser blast. But even if he has one, just we're up double, triple his hand size most of the time. And we finally get our Falcon. So you're saying you know he hasn't got a super laser blast, but Falcon is like the true MVP in this match, uh, where it's just so hard for him to play around. Just double checking life. I'm not going to count you, I guess. So he's smack him in the face. Well, so why is Falcon so good? Because we can just bounce it to our hand. It's really hard for them to ever interact or remove it. Um, so, you know, as soon as we get it, it's just kind of three damage that controller pl the control player has to take every single turn. And yeah, most of the time we do bounce it back to our hand. And we're going to play three for another Falcon. Just hit him in the face for three. Now he goes to one. Uh, which pretty much says, hey, you need to super laser blast me at the start of your next turn, but I'm just going to return Falcon to my hand, so then you would also need the out for Falcon after I return it to my hand. And he just lays down his hand, right? It's over. But he would also, right there, like let's say he does uh, super laser blast off the top of the deck. Um, my Falcon's back in my hand, so I get to play Falcon, and then he has to answer the Falcon. And then, you know, again, my opponent has no hand. He just killed his own Avenger, and we're still cooking with cards. We're still cooking with cards. So this was game one. Uh, if you guys like the commentary, let me know uh, in the comments below. There is a game two. I will be posting that uh, as soon as I make one of these videos, right? Um, but thank you so much for watching, guys, and as always, peace.